Hi everyone, Psychic Medium Elizabeth Rue of the Paranormal Priestess. I have a video today that I really was feeling very, very strongly and I'm hoping that perhaps it will be something that you may want to return back to. So um, let me just introduce myself really quick for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I am a psychic medium, an angel channeler. Uh, I am also known as a remote spirit extractor specialist and I do this work much anywhere all over the world um, and I also work with twin flames so I also consider myself um, a twin flame guide I myself have a blu-ray divine blu-ray twin flame um, today's video I really was feeling very strongly because so many of my clients have been feeling really out of whack lately and um, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to understand that there's just been so much going on. There has been activations. There has been um, so many downloads. Uh, there has just there's been portals. We have another one coming up, the Lionsgate on eight eight. So it's really been uh, constant, and there's been a lot of divine light, divine energy coming through. We're doing a lot of the release work, and it's been very exhausting been very exhausting. I know some of you who I speak to are really just kind of tired on their twin flame journeys. Um, and, you know, it's been a long stretch for a lot of you, which I usually say, and rightfully so. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's challenging. It, it's very, very challenging. And since this is a rough summer, um, and I think that people are reacting very, uh, strongly also from it. I, I feel like this, because this summer is as intense as it is, um, and we, many of us are at the end of, if you're on the Twin Flame journey, you, a lot of you are at the end of it, and with that, there's been a lot of really, really intense letting go, and, and letting go of baggage, baggage and intense beliefs, patterns, and all those things. So, you know, it's it, it gets to be very, very draining, it gets to be frustrating, and all of that. And so I really was thinking to myself, well, you know what, um, balance is really, really needed here. And I, I think that, um, I just want to start off with this, that a lot of people who are on the spiritual journey, whether they are a twin flame or not, it kind of doesn't matter. But um, I think, I say it doesn't matter because this topic of balance really applies to everybody. It's so important for everybody. Um, I just think that finding the balance um, when things are getting out of balance, uh, that's going to be the way to just bring yourself back because we tend to lose ourselves. We tend to lose ourselves, um, especially when we're going through such significant shifts. Um, so I'm just going to talk about some of the ways in which I have been thinking about balance, um, some ideas. Um, for me, I mean, just... From the standpoint of being a psychic medium, an angel channeler, doing the severe clearing work that I do, um, you know, and and be and helping so many different people, and that pulls on my energy sometimes, you know, and I'm so compelled to help people, and you know, every time I'm connecting with someone, um, I have to remember to let go and disconnect from their energy and their stories and their hardships and all of that, and I have to find my core. I have to find my balance, so how do I do that? Well, first off, I would definitely suggest that, you know, disconnecting and letting go of other people's stuff is is really very, very uh, crucial to do, so that way it's not affecting your energy, uh, therefore also affecting your physical body. So disconnecting, I, a lot of you can be out, empaths out there and you sponge up energy and anytime that someone is really, really angry or upset or anxious, or depressed, you're taking on their emotion and um, it's really not good and it can really cause a lot of disease, you know, or dis-ease within the body and you know, you don't want that. You don't want other people's stuff. You know, your own journey, I'm sure, is challenging enough to deal with everything that you're dealing with and the things that are coming up for you to recognize and let go of. Uh, so let alone, you know, having to deal with other people's emotions that don't belong to you. So I think it's really, really important to understand that, um, or recognize rather, when it's not your stuff and it's someone else's. So there's that. Um, also, to I want to mention people pulling on energy. Um, that's, of course, I would consider that one way, but 
sometimes we're tr we're so compelled when we're on this spiritual journey to help everybody that we forget to help about our, help ourselves or nurture ourselves, and it just doesn't work. You know, our our missions work best, or our life purpose works best when we are able to be in balance and find our core. Okay, and there has to be enough of us there so that way we could help other people. So if we allow other people to constantly pull on our energy and constantly, constantly drain us because we want to help so many people and we're, we're just like a nonstop machine and we forget about ourselves, um, eventually you're going to get the, the symptoms, the signs that, you know, there's just not enough of you and you'll probably feel really, really spaced out and very exhausted and just not really be able to do your job at an optimal level and you want to be the best version of yourself so recognizing that is definitely um, a part of balance for sure um, releasing you know the releasing process has been happening like we're talking about a lot and this summer oh my god it's been a pivotal point I, I would say um, for just getting done uh, the last of the last, you know, and re releasing some of the, the, the last uh, things that have really kept us down. And not only we're releasing from this lifetime, but we're releasing from other lifetimes as well. So, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. And we have to remember that anytime that we are releasing things, we want to be able to also take in new energy and, and create new energy for ourselves, um, manifest new positive things. Um, anytime things, things are taken away, there's always new, fresh energy to replace that. Um, and so it, it's just important that we have the that exchange there. You know, we're releasing what we no longer need, and then we are stepping into our manifestation mode, and then we're manifesting the things that we would like in our lives. And I'm wearing the Trochecha, which um, I don't know if everyone knows, but I follow the Druidic path, the old Celtic path of the Druids. And so I am very connected to nature, very connected to the powers of three, uh, land, sky, and sea, body, mind, and spirit, uh, the moon phases, um, and so the, the number three is very, very sacred to the Celts. It always was, the interconnection, um, the, the past, present, and future. It can also mean that as well. And um, that's why I, I wore it today, actually, for the, the uh, especially for this video. But balance is something that I always work with. And I like to work with the moon phases. And that's a nice way of working with balance. So when you know that the moon is, is new, that's your time where you can start manifesting things in your life. Newer energy, new, newer experiences. Um, and then when the moon is full, that's the time where that energy can help you to release and get rid of things that you no longer need in your life. And you have, again, that uh, give and take. You have that exchange going on. Hence balance. So that is very, very important. And uh, I think that when we're constantly in the release, 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 release mode, we also forget that what about bringing in that new energy? What about that newer focus? You know, you let go to bring in, you let go to bring in. And, um, you know, and also too, when like cleansing our space is another good point. Um, anytime we're using any kind of uh, cleansing method, it doesn't matter what it is. Like just say in general, like if, if you use sage to cleanse, there's so many different ways, of course, to, to cleanse. It could be from intention, with intention, it could be with herbs, it could be with visualizing light. Um, the whole point is, though, that any time that you're removing energies, it creates a void. And so you want to fill that void. You want to replace the energies that were removed and bring in new, lighter, cleaner vibrations. So for those of you who maybe you're kind of forgetting to, to bring in that new energy after you clear yourself or after you clear your space, 
that's a, a very real part of balance. Um, with healing work, anytime you know, you're going to cleanse your energetic bodies, you want to bring in that newer healing energy to replace it. Okay, you always want to fill the void. So I just wanted to, to mention that. But there's also a, another topic that with balance that I feel like this has to be talked about now because I don't feel... I feel just like some people out there are struggling with their spiritual life versus their human life, their physical life, especially those who are just starting to awaken. I, I think that it gets to be a little confusing as to, well, now that I'm spiritually awakening um, and I'm learning new concepts, I'm learning new things about myself, I'm discovering, I'm growing, I'm evolving. Um, perhaps, you know, some things regarding the earthly plane, I'm ignoring them, or I don't need them anymore. And see, this is where I feel like this causes a problem. And I was thinking a lot about this lately in terms of my old life. Of course, yes, there have been old people who had to go, you know, out of my space. Uh, my life has changed tremendously. For those of you who don't know some of my story, I started out as a hard rock singer um, of a band. I was doing a lot of live shows. I recorded two albums. I was doing radio. I was doing, you know, promos and, you know, uh, all these different things. Everything that I could do to try to get my band off the ground and all that. And at that time, I really felt like that was where my life was going to lead. It was my destiny to, to be a, a famous singer of a band. And although I, I really loved it, and, um, you know, and, and there were parts of me who, where I felt like, oh, my gosh, like it made me feel so alive. But doing this now and this mission and how important it is to me and doing the psychic work, <clears throat> the medium work, the angel work, and the clearings, helping Twin Flames, I know this is my bigger spiritual mission, but what I ended up doing is I kind of X'd that part out of my life and said, okay, this is over, that time's done, I can't bring it back, nor should I try to bring it back, and um, yes, the past is over, however, those were very real parts of me, there were very real aspects that, why shouldn't they be in my life now, you know, and I think people really get caught up a little bit too much um, in the spirituality and in the journey and too much when I say too much I mean that they're forgetting that they're here living a human experience and this is why I'm doing this video you know this is really the <coughs> excuse me the main reason I just think that so many people are feeling the effects of all this high energy and those who are awakening are constantly fishing for more and more information. They want to hear more card readings. They want to they want to look up more things on the internet regarding twin flames. They want to you know meditate more. You know, clear their chakras, do all these different, and that's great. It's fantastic. That's all on the right track. Um, but my point is is when does it get to be out of balance? When does it get to be way too much, too overly consuming, where we have to really remind ourselves to take ourselves back, take a step back, and remember to partake in our earthly lives? Because remember, you know, we, are, we chose to be here in an earthly form to not only change the world and to bring more spirituality, but we still... You know, there's nothing wrong with being here and enjoying Earth. And so for me, I was forgetting parts of myself that were really important. And they were positive things. Writing music. Singing. You know, playing my guitar, playing my piano. These were things that made me feel alive. These were things that I tapped into my creativity and <clears throat> they... They helped me. They helped me to heal. And as soon as I, I understood what my mission was, I automatically thought to myself, oh, okay, well, that part is over, and I'm just 
I just put it down. I used to write poetry. And that helped me to focus my thoughts. It helped me to heal. Um, I found great enjoyment in that. And again, I tossed that aside. And, you know, I, I just, this just recently just came to me and I thought to myself, well, those are very important aspects of me. Those are also very good parts of me that I don't want to lose. And I've been losing them because I've been so overly focused and consumed with doing my spiritual mission and helping people, which is nothing wrong with that. But again, it's about just understanding balance and also realizing that you are not only here to do a spiritual mission, helping people, you know, you, you and your twin flame are here to really change the templating of earth and really um, be a service, be of service to humanity, but it can be too much. It can be, it can be too much. And we have to remember that just the simple things in life, the things that maybe are not so exciting to other people, but make us feel alive. Those are the things that we can't forget. And those are the things that we do still have to incorporate in our lives. Okay. So, um, you know, there may be some of you out there that used to find fun and enjoyment and maybe some destructive things. So maybe you felt like at that time back in the day that drinking and like overly partying or, you know, whatever the case may be, indulging too much in sex, maybe that, those were your ideas at that time for the level of understanding that you had. Maybe those were your ideas of enjoyment. Like that's what quote unquote a good time was. And now of course, you know, you're in a different place. You've shifted and you're more positive and those destructive things are no longer in your life. That's good. That's good. But what about all the really positive things that you are still forgetting? You know, we're good. Like, here's an example. Like, we do so much spiritual work, and sometimes we neglect our bodies. And we forget that there is so much enjoyment in just allowing ourselves to be present, to breathe, to focus on our bodies, okay? And I just feel like this is so important. For me, it's so enjoyable to do yoga. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's take a drink, quick drink of water. Yoga is something that really helps me, and it may help you out there. I know it's very trendy, um, but yoga really helps with balance body, mind, and spirit. So anytime where I feel like I am just being drained perhaps, or it's been so much spiritual work and perhaps I'm, I'm doing a lot of meditation or I'm doing a lot of release, I'm doing a lot of manifesting, all the spiritual stuff. I, I know that at that time I have, grounding myself is very, very important. And for those of you who are not familiar what that word means, it means really connecting with the earth. The ground, Mother Earth, your physical body, your physical senses, you're focused on the moment, your presence, being present. Being present is so, so, so crucial. The higher up you go, the more you grow, the more you're evolving, the higher vibration your frequencies get. It's really, um, this is a, a very, very important part of balance is to remember that. Okay, so I not only find enjoyment in yoga, but it also, at the same time, helps me to ground and find that balance because I am focusing in on my body, my breath, my body, the movement. And it also assists me in letting go of other people's vibrations. Or if I'm feeling very anxious and upset about something or having trouble letting, letting go, yoga helps me with that as well. And I actually want to give a shout out to... Um, to yoga with Adrian on YouTube because I found her a year ago and it literally has changed my life. She's she's just she makes it fun. She's very natural. Um, she allows the yoga poses to benefit anyone at all levels, and so that um, has really really assisted me, especially with the spiritual work that I do. 
Um, other things that help me, I, I love to do boxing. I love to do like mixed martial arts. And that really finds, um, I feel like I, I find my empowerment in that. It brings me strength. It helps me to build muscle. And it just helps me feel uh, more confident. And anytime I'm feeling very erratic in my head or I'm feeling anxious or whatever the case may be, if I'm way too much in my thoughts, that really helps with focus. Any kind of martial arts is a really great discipline for that. Um, so that's just another way. Um, focusing in on earthly things. I it just I can't say it enough. Um, those of you who love nature, uh, again, I, I really, really love nature, especially that I'm a druid, uh, but nature just benefits everyone. Everyone who's here on this beautiful earth, there are so many beautiful sights to see, and they don't even have to be that far. I mean, you can go to a local park, uh, you can go to a preserve, find a hiking trail, and when life gets to be way out of balance and you're feeling extremely emotional, you're feeling maybe like you're way too much in your head, you're thinking too much, you're worrying too much about what's going to happen um, with, the, with your life, uh, whether with your life purpose, um, with your health, with your twin flame, what, whatever the worry is. I always find that when I take a walk in nature, I know I'm with the trees, um, and I'm able to put my hand on the trees, and I, I can... I feel the energy, it helps me to heal, heals my body. I'm also able to connect with the spirit of that tree or the dryad. Um, I could connect with, um, with the with fae, with fairy and elemental, so that's just something extra about me. Um, I just find it so, so beneficial. Um, going by running water, it's a, it's a beautiful way of just finding a emotional release. Um, doing that walk and just being with nature helps me to release my thoughts, my worries, and my concerns, because I'm human, you know, I, I do the work that I do, and I, and I try my best to help people, um, but, you know, I'm human, <coughs> and I have to also remember to tend to myself, so whenever someone is feeling like they are uh, just really delving into spirituality way too much, and it's really spacing them out and causing them to just not really be here, that's a really good indicator that you, you got to bring something else that's earthly in, you know, and there might be some things from your past that you've enjoyed that you thought, oh, well, I'm spiritual now, so I, that's not me, and I really don't think that's, that's healthy. I really think that um, there are so many different aspects of ourselves, like me being a singer, me being in a band, me writing music, maybe it's not in that capacity the way it was, but playing, writing, singing, those things brought me joy. Those things brought me back to earth, back to basics. And I, I think that with everything going on, it's very, very difficult sometimes for those who are spiritual to be brought back to basics. And I also think that so many um, souls are not native to earth. So whether you originated in Atlantis, Lemuria, uh, you know, some other different galaxy or Sirius, and there's a lot of, you know, souls who are here that they are finding it hard to adapt to Earth. They always have. Okay, and I understand that, and I resonate with that greatly. And But the truth is, is that we did decide to come here, and we came here for a very special purpose. But we also came here to have the human experience, and I don't want you all to forget that. Having the human experience is just as important as having the spiritual experience. You can't have one and that not the other. Okay, we are living in this human vessel. And to be way too spiritual and to not be able to focus and be present in our lives, it's going to cause a lot of anxiousness, possible depression, or, you know, just instability, emotional instability and mental instability. And it's really not good. And, like... I always tell clients who are excited about uh, learning new spiritual methods, new information, and they want to go on a million and one sites and a million and one YouTube videos and all of these things and check out card readings and, and do all of these healing things. That's great. The excitement is fantastic. But you have to catch yourself when it becomes way too much and it's overwhelming you. And you'll feel it. You know, when you're out of balance, you will feel 
drains, you will feel tired, you will feel lethargic. Um, and that's not going to help you. That's not going to help you, and that's not going to help you to help others. So remembering to come back to your core is always really, really, really important because a lot of people, I think, lose focus of that, and they forget that having uh, a healthy human lifestyle and understanding that and embracing that and also you know, nurturing their physical body it's just as important as the spiritual end of it. You know, for an example, our bodies, taking care of our bodies physically, you know, eating a healthy diet as best we can, we're not perfect, exercising. I mean, these are things that I, I hold very highly. I try to eat as clean as I can. I exercise every day. Um, you know, I, I try my best also to... Um, to don't forget that even though I'm helping lots of people, that to come back to my own self and find my own balance with my own meditation and my own prayer, because even though I'm out there, you know, I, I'm trying to help as many as possible, I have to remember that to keep being go, 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 and forget about me and what I need is not a good thing. And in the end, it's not going to be helpful to the world if I can't function at 100%. So that goes back to the whole balance factor. You know, living a life on Earth, uh, again, you know, is is challenging, especially when our lives change drastically. Um, but I usually suggest to people if they can try to ignore what maybe the negative things that other people say, such as like friends and family members or coworkers, sometimes they're not going to understand what's best for you, especially if you went through some major changes and they're not recognizing you anymore. So they're used to you being one way and having these certain preferences. And now you've changed so much and perhaps you've even changed, you know, people in your space. They're not understanding like, who are you anymore? But the important thing is to bring yourself back to your center and to do what makes you feel joy, do what makes you feel happy. And if those things are maybe not exciting to other people, like if they want to go out and they feel like getting drunk and having lots of sex and, you know, whatever it is, whatever reckless behavior is considered just an awesome time, um, and then you, like, your idea is an awesome time is, like, being out in nature or perhaps, like, you know, going out for some herbal tea and uh, writing some poetry or, you know, maybe just seeing, like, a, a free, like, concert in the park or every now and then and, you know, maybe they find that lame. Who cares? Who cares? Screw that. Because you know what? This is your life and this is your journey, okay? And... If those are the things that are going to help bring you into balance, um, those are the healthy things, those are the things that are going to, going to fulfill you for who you are now, who you've become, who you've grown into, then, you know, then I think it's, it's really about just not allowing that to affect you, to, you know, not allowing people to uh, be in your space who are negative, not accepting that. Because it's true, you know, some people may judge you. They may. But it's, it, what's more than important here is to be able to find things, earthly things, and take a breather and disconnect from all of the uh, extreme spiritual inner work. Because we've all been doing it like a machine. Honestly, it's been like nonstop. It's been accelerated. So I'm not saying don't do the work. That's absolutely, I always encourage people to do the inner work because that's going to get the best results, you know. Um, and that's going to be the results for them in, in terms of their self-mastery, which I always make sure to bring up that it's really about achieving growth, you know, self-mastery. And that's what, that's what this whole entire thing, this whole spiritual journey is about. You know, the twin planes tend to forget that too. Um, but just really being able to understand what your limitations are and to not allow yourself to get uh, pulled on too much and drained. Okay, so going back to finding 
grounding, being present, and finding, um, I mean, our lives are never going to be normal. So I, I understand that. So it's a bad word. Like, I would never classify myself as normal. I'm probably as weird as, as they get. <laughs> but, um, um, but just to be able to enjoy things, like I enjoy nature and I enjoy music, um, you know, and I, I love free shows in the park. Hey, I just saw a tribute band to Steve, uh, Fleetwood Mac and Tom Petty. I thought it was awesome. Last year I saw a tribute to David Bowie. Psh, it was free. I'm there. And you know what? I really wanted to be there because I needed a break. I need a break. I needed to have just a simple time, just singing, dancing, you know, being outside, being with people, woo, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, and it's so needed. It's like those simple things are just as needed as doing all of this spiritual work, the releasing, the manifesting, you know, releasing all the baggage, you know, helping people, reading for people, helping people to heal, being a healer. You know, anytime you're a healer, you know, it, it's um, it, it's taxing on you and can be taxing. So it's really, um, it's really crucial to be able to release other people's vibrations. It's really important to pull back when you find yourself getting way too sucked in to, um, you know, the esoteric world. And uh, it's important to find the earth to balance out that esoteric world. It really is. Are you going to find yourself just completely out of it? You know, and again, you, you have to be present. You have to be present and grounded in your body because you're here to bring very special things to planet Earth. That's what you're here to do. So I, I know also, too, some people get very caught up in having like uh, astral experiences or uh, visiting other dimensions. Uh, and, and all of that, and you know, it's exciting. You have to be careful to protect yourself and all that, but it, you can really be pretty amazing and it can open you up. And so it's very tempting to wanna always do that, but remember that too much of that is really not gonna help your physical body. In fact, it can make you sick to do that. Again, neglecting the physical body, draining yourself, causing yourself to just be spaced out and lethargic and not be present. And the divine needs you here. They need you here, guys. So they need you present. Remember that you're here for a reason, a very special purpose, and to be balanced, to be at your core. This is what's going to take you there. Um, so people judging you, judging your journey, um, Judging, you know, what your ideas are as far as you enjoying your earthly life. Um, a lot of people may tell you what you should be doing. Um, I know I, I, I've heard this a lot, you know, from people about what are you doing? You should be doing this. You should be doing that. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Why you do? Everyone else does it. Everybody else does it, you know. And um, the truth is, for those of you who are watching this right now, you are not everybody else. That's for sure. Um, you have come here to not be like the 3D Collective, and I'm not saying, oh, anyone's better than anybody else, but we've come here for change. We've come here to elicit change. Because we're leaders. Those of you who are watching this, you know, many of you are Twin Flames. You came here to bring change. You didn't come here to be like the rest of the Collective. You came here to change those templates, rewrite them. Okay? So with that, it, it, it does become kind of challenging to enjoy earth, to find your footing, um, to find your place. I understand that. But if you can understand that just enjoying the simple things in life, you know, whether it's taking a walk in the park or hiking or fishing or uh, jogging outside or uh, having herbal tea, or seeing the movie, or yeah, bowling, or whatever, whatever it is, what, whatever the case may be, 
going over, you know, a, a friend's house and just watching a really stupid movie, you know, something that doesn't require a lot of thinking. <laughs> Let me just off the tongue. Um, you know, what, I, what I'm trying to bring out is, is that um, that's a part of balance because this journey does tend to be uh, a lot. It consumes you. And I also want to bring up the fact, too, that there are a lot of, um, uh, in particular, like Twin Flame, um, they want to find community and they want to exchange with each other. And this is great. I mean, I, I love that I'm doing YouTube. Um, although my videos are for everybody. Yes, I know a lot of you are, are twin flames and I, I work with them. Um, but when does discussing this journey and talking about it with others, when does that become so much where the journey is just, just not shutting off? And I don't mean like to make the journey go away because it's an honor. It's an honor to be a twin flame. I'm very proud of it. And I'm sure many of you um, feel that way or maybe not all the time. <laughs> I know it's hard, but, um, but really it is, it is an honor to be here doing this. Um, but when does speaking about it so much and looking it up so much and being on and community boards and all these things, when does that, when does that get to a point where it's just consuming you? That That's the point I'm making. So I want to make sure I'm getting this clear. Is that it's consuming you to where you are no longer in balance. It's not healthy. It, it really isn't. And what I also do find is that that also always, it has you focus on the journey constantly. And that may always keep you in the waiting. You're always in waiting. You're always focused on when, when, when is it going to happen? When, when, when is he or she going to do what I want them to do? When, when, when am I going to get an answer from them? You know, when, when, when is my twin flame going to finish up doing their work? Or when is my twin going to finally wake up and get it and understand that this is what this is and this is who I am? When, when, when? And so the constant engagement and constant, 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 we need a break. We need a break. And I, I think that many of you are really going to find help with that if you bring yourself back to the earthly pleasures. And I'm not, by all means, I'm not saying, like, run out there and go find a karmic partner or find a soulmate. But, like, you know what? Well, he or she is trying to figure out this damn thing. And I've waited, psh, I don't know how long. I, I'm going to go and I'm just going to go date him or her because, hey, i got to live my life. They're out there dating so-and-so. They don't seem to care, right? So I'm going to go and I'm going to do the same thing. I hear this from twins. Does that work? That never works. It never works. Um, it's the fact that, you know, by doing that, by realizing you're a twin and coming off the path, um, you're actually creating karma. So it's actually there's more energy to release with the person that you're dating because remember, you're always exchanging energy with that person. And so... That's more that you'll have to release on top of the things that were already there. Do you really want to do extra work? Psh, I know I wouldn't want to do that. I understand that there's sacrifices, but um, the end results are just uh, going to outweigh any type of, of sacrifices. Um, so that's not what I'm saying to, to do. I can't tell you what to do, but I wouldn't suggest to do that. That would not be the, the best option, <laughs> honestly. Um, but the thing is, is that you don't have to wait for happiness. You don't. Because some people feel like, oh, I can't be, I can't be happy until ABC happens in my life. And I don't have those issues. I can't ha be happy until and him and her, or, or him or her are in my life. And we finally have this relationship and we can go run off and be all happy together, happily ever after on a beach at sunset, something like that, castle. Um... Ah, visuals, castles. Um, but the, the thing is, is that your happiness never has to wait for another person. You never have to roll, uh, depend on another person for your happiness. And that's very, very true. And some people have a very big problem. They get mad with that. And the reason why they get mad is because they haven't realized that Happiness is always there to tap into. There's so many things that can bring you happiness and they don't have to be these extraordinary things. Your own spirit is enough to be happy about. You know, if you 
embrace yourself, if you're able to embrace and love yourself, um, you feel fulfilled. You feel fulfilled. It's about finding that wholeness within. It really, really is. Okay, you have to find that wholeness within to be able to, you know, find that wholeness with your twin flame. Okay, and by you giving up also like the things that you enjoyed and, and throwing away your interests and things that were a part of you or you don't want to get started on your life's work and things like that and you're constantly waiting for him and her, that's not balanced at all. That's not balanced at all. And that, that means that you are doing away with your identity and it really is about being the best version of yourself, you know. It really is. So um, you're, you're pulling in all of those things that were that were wonderful about you all these great things and you're getting rid of all the garbage so for me like maybe you know i'm not in a band anymore and i'm not uh, with those same people and doing the same type of music and so maybe that was that's not right in my life anymore but doing music singing playing writing songs those are all really positive things, and those are things that also are a part of me. They're earthly things as well, so it helps me to find my balance by focusing on those things as well. So I have the spiritual life, I have the uh, the earthly life, um, you know, and spending time with animals. It's another great way of, of finding balance. It also is very, very healing. Um, and uh, hey, when you have a pet, you're never alone, right? So, um, pets are great. Um, I'm a huge, huge animal lover. Uh, I, I lost my pets, unfortunately, but um, I'm sure that I will not be without pets in the future. Um, and I, I just think that spending time with animals, or, or maybe some of you out there, if you help animals, oh my god, awesome, totally for that. Um, it's just really a great way to give back. It's a great way to, um, again, you are embracing nature, um, and it, it's it's great. It's it's a great thing, um, and it's just it takes the focus off of constantly being concerned about the spirituality part, okay? And just the simple things, just taking your pet for a walk, playing with your pet, hiking. Uh, jogging, doing yoga, doing martial arts, dance. Dance is another wonderful thing. And dance really, again, it helps you to release uh, energy, negative energy, and it helps you to just have those feel-good vibes. Um, you're focused on your body, on your breath, and the movement. Um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way. And I, these things are just really, they're so, so needed. They're so needed when we get overly cons consumed by all of this it's a lot and I don't want you guys out there to to lose that to lose just even like reading a book like who people do we read read books anymore I mean I don't want to lose that I know technology has just it's been crazy with all the technology but I absolutely I refuse to use a Kindle in any kind of way I like a book I like a regular book and sometimes I just want to simply relax and just read read a book okay so it's not exciting to some people it's not exciting but you know what for me it's just a way again to shift my focus off of all of these things and it takes me into the present it allows me to relax and I don't have to be so focused on the future right so then it brings me back into balance um, the elements, just this ties into the Druidic part of earth, air, fire, and water. Um, for those of you, I know some of you might feel a little bit uncomfortable with the symbol, but actually it comes from sacred geometry and it is actually a beautiful symbol, but there's a point that I'm bringing this up, the, the pentagram. Um, the pentagram is, is a symbol of earth, um, earth, air, fire, and water are, you know, are the elements. And we have the spirit, which is in there, and the circle, it ties it all together in balance. And the pentagram really does represent the human body. So I, I think that um, it's a really great tool to work with when we're trying to find balance. If some of you are comfortable with that symbol, um, some of you may not be, really, it, it depends. 
Um, but the symbol itself goes way back to sacred geometry, and it really depicts that human human figure. And, and it really tells us a really clear story uh, about balance and just how crucial it is, because when you don't have balance, you have chaos, right? And then, you know, it's it gives us a challenge, again, once we have chaos, to, okay, I, I noticed that I have chaos, now it's time to bring myself back into balance. Earth, air, fire, and water, you have earth, which is Gaia, it's everything that's physical, our physical senses, uh, prosperity, sensuality, all of that. Um, it's, it's our bodies. It's, it's, it's earth. And we have air, which is communication, you know, our thoughts, messages. Okay, so it's the mind. We have water, which is emotions, our ability to love, to give and receive love. And then we have fire. Fire is the, the passion, the desire the drive, um, the projective energy, the movement, to take action, the sexual fire as well. Um, and we have the spirit, the spirit, which is at the top of the star, okay, the akasha, the spirit, okay? And so it's going to remind us that if, say, we're too much in our mind, way too much in our mind, our thoughts, worry, ego, doubts, anxious, um, scattered and all of that, you know, maybe we need to bring bring ourselves down to earth. Maybe we've got to get out of our minds. We have to come down to earth. You know, maybe if we are way too emotional, way, way too emotional, um, and we're constantly just in that receptive mode, meditative mode, and maybe we need to bring a little bit more of an analytical ability or logical ability to that, you know, um, it's true too. You know, maybe we are just not um, taking any action in our lives. We're constantly just dreaming our lives away. We're sitting in water, right? We're always dream, daydreaming, and visualizing, and all of that. But and we're receiving guidance and all that, um, which is great. It's wonderful to be receptive, but it's imbalanced if we don't balance that out with taking action in our lives, bring fire. Because it's that fire, that drive, that we have to take those steps. So some of you may find it helpful um, in terms of balance to work with the elements. Um, some may work well with the tarot, you know, if you resonate with that, um, or just to um, just to think about it, just to think about it, you may want to even write it down too, or where you feel right now you're out of balance. Where am I out of balance right now? Am I in my in my head too much? Am I constantly worried about what's going to happen or not going to happen? Am I in the future? Am I constantly trying to figure everything out, figure out what's happening? Am I doing that way too much? Am I in balance? Perhaps I need to uh, be in my heart a little bit more. You know, maybe I need to feel my own heart, feel my own emotions a little bit more. Maybe I have to uh, cultivate some more love for myself. Perhaps I'm always on the go. Go, 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 like a machine. Do, 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 do. And, and maybe it's just too much. And maybe I need more earth. Maybe I need more stability. Maybe I need stillness. Because too much of anything is never a good thing. And I... Again, like I wanted to talk about this because I just feel like with everything happening, it can really just be like a tornado and we, we just lose track of what's happening. We can't really see what's happening and balance is always something to come back to and I'm hoping that um, some of you out there maybe have got, got something from this and can think about this a little more to, to find your center, to find your core, um, and to understand your limitations, understand your boundaries with people, and your, your limitations with, with, um, with people, your limitations with, with yourself, your boundaries with yourself in, in terms of what is going to be too much for you? 
and to recognize that or what is not enough and to recognize that and to just work to bring yourself in balance. And when are we all the way up here when we still are meant to live a life down here and we kind of, we have to, we have to meet it. We have to meet it. Um, so there's just, you know, some things to think about. And I know that I have been thinking about this a lot. And for me, um, it's really helped me to feel a lot more centered. It's helped me to feel a lot more centered and I uh, was able to bring back some aspects of myself and simple things that I enjoyed. And um, this is helping me to just be a lot more productive, I feel, um, and a lot more, even more present in the spiritual work that I do. And it's allowing me to also have more energy. Um, so, um, you know, it's just, I, I really feel like that's, that's the key, and some of us are missing that, and I, I think it would make things a little bit easier um, if we just understood that it's about the journey and to stop focusing so much on the destination and to just focus on the moment, focus on just being alive, being alive and being uh, very thankful and having gratitude for everything that's in our lives because we always want more, 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 more. Um, when does that ever stop? You know, it's it, just enjoying what you have and being grateful and enjoying everything that's around you, enjoying who you are, enjoying your physical form, enjoying the beautiful, you know, miracles of nature that are out there, enjoying just simple, silly times. And it'll just, it really give you a, a boost of energy, a guaranteed, if you do that, because it, it really, Healing to me, like balance is, that's, that's the way. That's the way. Okay. Definitely. So any questions or comments below, I welcome it all. Um, of course, if you want to find me on the paranormalpriestess.com, I am there. I'm on Facebook. If you want to like my page, uh, at the Paranormal Priestess. I'm on Twitter. You can follow the YouTube channel, which is at ParapriestessYT. I also have my personal Twitter, at Para underscore Priestess. And I'm wishing you guys so many blessings, so much healing, and so much balance. So don't forget that you are a very important part of the equation and to not neglect yourself and, um, don't worry, things will turn out just fine, just the way they're supposed to be. Um, just enjoy every single day perfectly as it is. From the heart of the darkness, born the light. Take care, guys.